You're listening to the All Systems Go podcast, the show that teaches you everything you need to know to put your business on autopilot. Learn how to deploy automated marketing and sales systems in your business the right way with your host, the professor of automation himself and founder of Automation Bridge, Chris Davis. Welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. I'm your host, Chris L. Davis, founder of Automation Bridge, an online publication for small business automation. In this episode, I want to discuss what what practically every entrepreneur struggles with in this digital era, uh, especially if you're just starting a business and it it is the the curse of creation. And I want to discuss how to cure yourself (laughs) from this detrimental way of operating. It, It is a gift. Cre- the ability to create in this digital era for businesses is a gift that has not been afforded to us traditionally. So I don't want you to think at all that I'm I'm saying that there's anything bad. But in this episode, we're going to learn how to properly leverage that gift for your small business growth, your ongoing, continual small business growth. All right. If you're new to the podcast, make sure you do two things. One is You listen to this episode in its entirety. And then two is afterwards, you leave a five star rating and review. Um, It is greatly appreciated. Every review I read them, um, it helps get the word out, validate this podcast as the top marketing automation podcast. And I just want to thank Jay Hall is the username for their latest review called Clarity exclamation says, thanks, Chris. You've been able to make things clear when it comes to marketing as a small business owner and without formal training in marketing. This made things clear that I couldn't verbalize myself. Thank you. You are very welcome. And I look forward to you, listener who hasn't left that five star rating and review. I look forward to reading your review on a future podcast as well. And if you have not subscribed to the All Systems Go podcast yet, you can do so. We're in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, anywhere where you listen to podcasts. We are there. We're also on YouTube. We are also on YouTube. So if you want to search Automation Bridge, All Systems Go podcast, whatever one, um, you can listen and watch the podcast on YouTube as well. So I'm excited about that. But remember, make sure you all leave a five star rating and review um, in iTunes when you can. And let's let's talk about the this curse of creation. And and really, the, the reality is it's never been easier there, there's never been a time easier than now to create. And guess what? It's going to keep getting easier because there's no barriers. There's no barriers between your mind and reaching the people with what you can create. OK, and, and as great as that is, it comes at a cost. Right. I mean, just think about it. You can literally go from hmm, I'm thinking about a certain thing. You can type up an email hit send. And that certain thing is now in front of X amount of people. This this is unprecedented, right? We're we're so used to this now that it takes a traditional marketer at times to really put a value on this, you know, to get in front of a massive amount of people. It always cost dollars. You know, traditional means traditional channels of marketing were very expensive, So I appreciate. Trust me, I appreciate it. But I also acknowledge the responsibility it comes with. And this was really brought to my attention when I was reading a post on LinkedIn by by uh, Ravi. He's the uh, creator of Digital Access Pass, one of the the most legacy membership plugins uh, for entrepreneurs online. They were one of the first that I use, one of the first platforms that I use. Um, Him and his wife do an excellent job running that program. And he, he, he mentioned something. He said, promote more than you create and create more than you consume. And I tell you, that stuck with me. Um, it, you, you know how it is. Sometimes there's just certain ways that people can say things that just it's unforgettable. And I couldn't forget that. And it made me realize that that we're born consumers. 
that is it's in the DN, our DNA. And I'm speaking specifically to those in the United States born and raised. Um, we're born consumers. School teaches it to us. Um, most parents reinforce it. And those who break free from from this consuming behavior more than creation, they're immediately uh, uh, hit, we'll say, with, with the creator's curse. And, and how to overcome that. And and what is the creator's curse? That's that's creating more than you promote. Right. Because it's one thing to break consumption and say, OK, I'm not going to spend 20 hours a day on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, looking at everybody else's post. I'm not going to spend all this time reading the news and reading these news articles or other blog posts or uh, consuming Netflix episodes, just consuming everything everyone else has created. That's one step is to break free from that and say, I'm going to create my own. Maybe maybe it's my own YouTube channel. Maybe it's my own mini series. Maybe it's my own blog. Maybe it's my own articles. Right. Published on on somebody else's website. Maybe it's my own podcast. You go from consumption to creation. That's a big step. That's the that's the gateway into entrepreneurship. That's a big step. But then right when you get into creation, you need to transition to promotion. Now, that is that's a that's another big step, but it's not as seamless or easy as going from consumption to creation. So what happens is instead of creating content and repurposing it for for maximum reach and promotion, you end up creating more, right? More products, more lead magnets, more blog posts, more status updates, more videos, more, 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 more. Right. And you you can easily get caught up in mistaking more for momentum. And, and, and let me say this. Let me let me put this disclaimer out there. There is a time for mass content creation and production. It, it is. I acknowledge that. And we'll talk about when that time is later. But it is very rarely in the early stages of your business. OK, so very rarely will you see the the action, the the activity of mass content production be fruitful at the early stages of business, because there's so many other things that you really need to fine tune when a business is getting started off the ground. Right. From your avatar, your target audience to your messaging. Right. Understanding the pains and communicating solutions to those pains. You know, there's a lot. OK, so when I say mass content creation, I mean, you're just all over the place right now. Now, mass content creation is not consistent content creation. There's nothing wrong if you want to consistently do, a, you know, weekly video, weekly blog post, weekly whatever. There's a consistent means of content creation. That's fine. The problem is when you're creating not just content, but you're creating products and you're not just creating products, you're creating websites and and and, and, and different uh, social media pages and, and, and all these groups. And you're so fragmented, right? You fragmented your business to the point where people don't know where to go. You've given them too many options so that that type of approach is often reserved for when you have a foundation in place to pay for or I should say a foundation in place to capitalize off of consistent content creation. Right. And when you do that, what you'll find is you will naturally stop creating so much. It's not it it won't even nobody will even have to convince you, hey, you don't need another Facebook page or hey, you don't need another product. Just keep selling the one that you have. Nobody will be able to convince you not to do it because you would have come to that conclusion yourself based on the results of the marketing. Right. And and that leads us into the cure because we're going to talk about the key to successful marketing and the cure is leveraging leverage and repurposing. That's the, that's how you break the creator's cure. Right. If we go back, that is how you promote more than you create. It is something I do not want us to ever undervalue the the importance of being able to create being a creator 
It is extremely valuable. So what you create, don't take that lightly. Right. What you create deserves promotion. If you're not going to promote it, don't create it. I'm serious. Okay, And and if everything about your business is new, you're always doing new stuff. You will find a new path to broke. You will. There's just no business. This it, it's not how things work, where the constant creation of new stuff. Equals success. These businesses are leveraging. They're leveraging successes of the past. They're leveraging uh, networks. I was listening to I think it was CNBC and it was talking the Slack CEO was on there just talking about their their stock and, and how they're uh, re, re, uh, forming their company or restructuring their company to make sure that they're built to last. And he mentioned something in there. He said that there's a Slack group that he has a private channel with a bunch of CEOs and they just get together and they talk about strategy, you know, what they're seeing, what's working. So you have to understand at every level of success, there is a leveraging of others information and expertise as well as your own. Okay. A successful business should not constantly start from scratch or always be creating new stuff. Do not mix that up with innovation. I I look at innovation as an improvement on what's what's existing. Right. So it's not that you're not looking at your product in innovating ways or, you know, uh, improving it. It's that you're looking at your product and saying, hey, I'm going to create another one. Oh, yeah, I could create three products. Oh, I could have three websites. Oh, you know what? We could go to um, we could hit five audiences right now. Right. It's just this idea that creating more and more and more is in some way going to add to your bottom line. And it's not because the, the, the thing is, when it comes to predictable profits, um, consistent conversions, right, in scale, leverage is your friend. You must be willing to leverage the success of others, as I mentioned, as a starting point. And then look for ways to improve or modify what they've done. OK, you're all you you need to be first off. Every entrepreneur needs to be in a group, a, a form of a mastermind where you can collaborate and connect with like minded individual in, individuals in different spaces. You need that buffet of experience that you can glean from on an ongoing basis. That's one. So that's going to get you closer to leveraging what has already been created, right? You, you, I'm telling you, you rarely want to start from scratch. If you're starting from scratch, you are on the longest and the most unproven path there is. You need to leverage some form of expertise or information to help you get some momentum out the gate. Let me say this. I know every idea feels like it's new, but it's not. There's nothing new under the sun. (laughs) Okay, I know you've been inspired in the shower, driving in the open road, uh, running on the treadmill, uh, working out, lifting weights, even playing basketball. Whatever the case is, I know you were inspired by an idea. But let me tell you, there's nothing new under the sun. The moment you start researching, you'll find there's other people, other businesses that have attempted or are doing something similar. It may not be 100 percent what you have in mind, and that's why you got excited about it. But there's something there for you to leverage to help you get started quicker. Perhaps the product is different, but the process is very similar to how you thought about getting your product to market. You know, whatever that is, once you understand that dynamic, that you're not truly creating anything totally new, you know, like it's it's not like you you have just invented something that the world has never seen. It's just a variation of something. Right. Um, It's a lot easier to to not put so much focus on creating. I meet people all the time and and these are especially um, new entrepreneurs who 
their whole and, and, and this was me. All right, let me put myself in this uh, when, when I was just getting in business. Uh, it was all about creating. It, it was all about coming up with an idea and protecting that idea before any action was taken on the idea. Right. I, I remember one time I thought of an app. They actually have these apps now, but uh, this was way back in maybe 2007 or so. I was like, man, they need an app where you can go and find where people are playing basketball. And then after you play, you could actually rate the gym and the players. Right. So it was like a, a like a social network for basketball. And you could go in and say, hey, I was playing with so and so, so and so. He's a good passer. He's a ball. Hard, you know, <laughs> whatever the case is. So you have a database because what I was what what I, what was happening to me is I would move to these new cities and it will be hard to find where the pickup games are with people who I enjoy playing with who could really play. You know, like not people who are trying to get a get a championship off a pickup game, you know. So I had that idea and I remember young and young in my entrepreneurial uh, process. I went immediately from idea to what should I name it to? Man, I need to trademark this and man, I need to, you know, this, this hadn't hadn't even wrote it down. You know, and as you see, nothing came of it from me. Now, other people have taken this idea and created it, but it just shows you. I I know that this is the process that most people go through is they think of something. They create this idea and immediately go into, oh, how do I protect it? How do I do this? How do I do that? Instead of looking and saying, you know what? I acknowledge I have an idea and how I'm going to bring this idea to market may be different. But there's not going to be a this thing is not 100 percent original. You have to be willing to say that to yourself, because what that does is it opens the door for you to be able to leverage other people's experience, processes and success to help you get your creation in front of people the fastest. And the reason why you need to focus on getting that one creation to people the fastest is because you need to know what if it'll work, if it'll work or not. We're not listen as as savvy marketers. um, We we adhere and, and, and we defer to the market's response at all times is what split testing is. Right. We start with an idea. Right. You start with something that you feel. Yes. You know, this is what the market needs. But ultimately, um, the market has to they have to respond to it. Right. The the narrative that you're that you're pushing has to be accepted. And if not on to the next one, no harm, no foul. Or there's some retooling. There's some work to do. There's some serving. There's some understanding of messaging, pain points, all of that. Right. But that's that's this is the process that it takes when you create something. Right. So if all of that is already on the table, the last thing you want to do is introduce something where you can't leverage anything to help get you started or stay going. You know, you're going to leverage along the way. Right. So um, what this means is it's. It's introducing what it's all about. It's not about your idea. Sorry. Your idea is good. As soon as you have it, embrace it. I like to write my ideas down. If you can't clarify your idea in writing and and share that with people and they see the see what you're saying, it's not worth going any further at all. And that's with anything you create. Right. But but right after that, you know, right after you have the idea and you clarify it, um, the next thing it's all about execution. That That's what it's. It's not about creation. It's about execution. And I learned this listening to um, somebody from the Silicon Valley. Um, they were asked, hey, how do you protect your ideas? You know, people can steal your courses. They can steal your 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 content. How do you protect it? And and her response was, you know, I'm, I'm from the Silicon Valley. So everybody has an idea. Right. Like and everybody has the same idea. It's all about execution. It's not necessarily about the idea. It's who who executes more effectively that wins. And again, I'm just like, man, that is so profound (laughs) because the 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 focus, again, is taken off of the creation itself. 
being so unique and acknowledging, look, man, I, I just thought of this. There's about 10 other people who thought of this yesterday. I'm already behind. I need to go into execution. Right. Because it's the execution that gives life to your creation. And, and uh, uh, a good thought <laughs> is just that. Right. A, a something that that is in your head that you've imagined, uh, you know, you've thought of and spoke of. It doesn't exist. An idea is just an idea. When you execute on it, that's what starts to give it life. It starts to shape it. And, and 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 what you're looking for in execution is leverage and repurposing, right? Leveraging the successes and processes of others and repurposing what is working for you. Right. So what do I mean by repurposing? It's when you create one thing, how do you get. How do you get multiple benefits out of that one thing? If you're going to sit down, if you're going to sit down and say, OK, I'm going to write this blog post that is going to serve as a landing page of some sorts that that when people read it and they say yes, they can they can opt into a list. And they're that much closer to me get, getting them to convert to a customer. Right. And you sit and you write that blog post. You've created something. OK, the next step is how do I get this one beautiful thing that I've created in front of as many people as possible? Right. How do I repurpose this thing? How can I take this blog post and then use it as a script and record a podcast? Or how can I take snippets of this and create um, create quotes to share? How can I create quotes to share online? How can I how can I take bits and parts of this and and create three to five minute videos and then link back to it? Right. How can I how can I take this and then put it in front of people who 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 my business is is synergetic with? And perhaps use this as a means of getting a, an appearance on a podcast or on their video or whatever the case is. How can I take this one thing that I've created and get the most out of it? I call it how do I get the most juice from this one fruit? Right. How can I just keep squeezing it and get as much as possible out of it? It's that practice over time. That is going to serve you in a greater capacity than if you just keep creating, 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 creating. And what you what you end up doing is truly having a library of content. And one thing about a library is what it's very quiet. It's very quiet in the library. So that means <laughs> you, you don't have a whole lot of visibility. It's just it, it, the visibility is not there to everything that you've created. It's just quiet. There's no noise. There's nobody talking about your stuff. Right. Every time you create something, you, you should be cre through repurposing. You use leverage to create. Right. We're, we're leveraging efforts to make the creation process more simple. But once we've created, we need to repurpose what we've created in the form of promotion to get it in front of as many people as possible. OK. And, and the only way to do that is to create multiple forms of it, uh, multiple modes of consumption. So audio, you know, uh, um, visual. Right. Um, and visual visual could be reading as well as video. Right. Listening. I mean, you have to think uh, short, long, whatever the case is, you have to get great at repurposing what you've created to honor what you've created. And again, get the word out. You're competing for people's attention. Everybody's not going to read that blog post, but you need to find multiple angles to position it. You know, maybe your first angle wasn't interesting. I every, I'm, you see it all the time when I log into Netflix. Um, sometimes there's a movie that I see and the cover art is terrible. So, or, you know, or not attractive, I should say. So I go past it. Can't judge a book by its cover, but we do. And then I log in later and they'll change the cover art and it'll catch my attention. And I find myself clicking play all because of the cover art was different. 
<laughs> same title, same description, same everything. And sometimes I have to catch myself and say, oh, wait a minute. That was that show that I didn't want to watch, you know, but it speaks to instead of them creating another movie. Hey, won't we just change the cover art to this movie? A lot of you know this is, is, is fatigue. Uh, you see it in advertising, ad fatigue, where you have a winning ad, but sometimes you just need to change the image or, you know, change the mode from, uh, 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 you know, maybe from a video to a still image, to a still image, to a testimonial, whatever. You're just swapping that out because people are used to seeing the same thing. Well, that's the power of repurposing. It catches people's attention a different way. So if you just create something and then put, you know, hey, I, I created this post and then you're off. And you're on to the next thing. No, it's the hardest, the hardest and longest path. OK. And, and and what you what you'll find is once you have this system, this repurposing system in place, you'll find that your content goes a lot longer. OK, your content goes a lot further, I should say. It reaches more people and you have greater impact with more minimal efforts. OK, and and I'll say this, uh, you know, when you're first getting started, you there are some areas where you will start from scratch. So I, I, I think that's where templates templates are, are extremely important. And, and I do appreciate templates. Um, rarely do I use them um, now. Uh, and, and it's really because I've pretty much defined all the processes in my business. And it's easy for me to start from scratch. You know, to start in my scratch is something that I've created <laughs> then from a template. Right. You know, I, I either have what I want to do in my mind because I've done it so many times. So a blank document or a blank canvas doesn't overwhelm me, which it does most other people. It doesn't overwhelm me. But what happens is every everything that I've created, everything that I create now becomes a template for the future. Right. And and the reason why, let, let me just say this. Um, here's a reason why traditionally I haven't been a big template fan. I like to browse templates to kind of see what's possible, but I very rarely use them um, because, again, I, I, I'm comfortable starting from scratch. I have a good idea. I normally have things mapped out. And then once I've created something, I'm leveraging what I've created. I'm repurposing that thing. I'm not starting from scratch again. Do it one time. This is this is my process. I do it one time. Don't do it again. Right. And and, and the reason why um, with templates is because every template comes with its own set of considerations as to why it was made and and what those considerations were rarely match up with mine. Very rarely. It could be as simple as, as simple as an abandoned cart. And you'll download the, the template and you'll put it in place and you'll be like, you know what? I. <sighs> I don't want to necessarily always send an email. Sometimes I just need to notify my sales rep and have them reach out. You know, like you you see it, but their consideration was, hey, they're on your website. Send it. Send them that email. They just added the uh, item to your cart. And maybe you're like, well, there's not necessarily a cart in my business there. There's a, a, a sales page you know, and a button they can click and then not go on. So it looks a little different. So when you start to look at these templates, a lot of times you just don't know the considerations that went into making that. Right. So many of you um, templates are a great starting point. I by no means want you to be like, well, I'm not using templates. Chris said not to. I'm just giving you insight on why I don't, because in my space, I'm pretty like it's not just my space. I I am the type of person that that is OK taking the time up front to get clear on what I want any technology to do. This is why I've never been able to use other people's budget sheets. I've always created my own because there's a certain way that I do my money, manage my money. <laughs> right. And although I appreciate everybody else's templates and it works for some people, some people can't. The thought of creating their own system is overwhelming. So templates are your friend. But I don't. I I know the specifications of all of my systems and it's OK for me to start from scratch, knowing that I'll never start from scratch again. OK, because I'm going to repurpose that effort that I've done. 
OK, so so repurposing comes twofold. Um, it's work done by others so you can create quicker because remember, repurposing is a form of leverage. So I'm leveraging what others have done so I can get started quicker. I need to create quicker since so stop spending so much time in creation. And then the time that I do spend in it, I need to be quicker. Right. So that's one effect of repurposing. And then um, two is repurpose what you've created for easier and louder promotion. OK, I think Gary V is probably like the main one that's been uh, really pounding this into the heads and minds of entrepreneurs. And this uh, idea of creating like 22 shareable pieces from from one piece of content. And it works. This is a lean approach to content marketing um, as well as just creation. I just what I don't want you all to do is get into the trap thinking you need 10 products, 10 lead magnets three websites, four webinars. This is what I see people do. I see them do this all the time. When I, when I talk about creation, you just need one pathway to turn somebody from a question mark to a customer. Everybody needs that one pathway until you have created that you're going to leverage the pathway of others. You're going to create your own steps within that pathway. And whenever you need to create an additional step, the first thing you're going to do is look at what you've previously created to see if you can leverage and repurpose that to shorten the path. Because once something is created, your job is to promote this thing like none other. Do not, I repeat, never, 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 never get tired of promoting your content. There's posts that I've read of mine that I wrote in 2006 and I read it and I'm like, well, that's actually good, but I've disqualified it. Ah, oh, that's like over 10 years old. That's, no, old to you. You're old as someone's new. I'm not talking relationships here. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking content, everybody. You're old as some, someone's new. Yes, you created it 10 years ago. They didn't read it 10 years ago. They're reading it now and it's new to them. So value what you create. Don't get into this creator's curse where I'm just more, 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 more. Do not do it. I've seen startups make this mistake. Right. Go for quantity instead of being able to quantify their efforts and really attribute. What is it that we're doing that's causing 80 to 90 percent of the lift and just do more of that? And I can guarantee you it's not more creation. It's it's doing more of what's already created, putting in front of more people what you've already created. So some of you, that's your green light right now. OK, if, if you're going to take the time to create something, you most definitely, definitely need to create the system to support the continuous promotion of it. So this is your green light to go back into those archives and queue them up. Queue them up in your buffer app, whatever the case is, however you want to promote it. Go extract some quotes from that stuff. Hire a VA if you need to. That content is good. Again, you need to be producing content consistently to stay relevant. But do not easily dismiss the power of what you've created already. OK, so who needs to hear that? Who do you know beyond yourself if this is you? That just keeps creating every day. It seems like every week they have a new name for a new product. Right. They've got an entire website just laid out all of this content. Nobody's reading it. Nobody's reading it. We create content to, for it to be consumed, everybody. So I don't don't tell me, oh, I don't want to promote. I don't I don't want it to be gimmicky. And this, this that's just you and your lack of understanding of of one marketing and, and how re, how the effect of rep, the effectiveness of repurposing and your unwillingness to get out of your comfort zone. You just want to stay in your little bubble. I just want to create and just keep going and people will find it. No, they won't. OK, who needs to hear this? Who's stuck in that creator's curse? They just find ways to create when it's like, listen, stop, stop making new stuff and make what's what you've created known. 
share this podcast with them. And, and while you do, since you've made it to the end for all of my new listeners, this is the time where you leave your five star rating and review all episodes and show notes. Anything that I mentioned, any resources, they're always available at automationbridge.com forward slash podcast. And if you're looking to learn about systematizing your business, I'd like to invite you to register for my weekly masterclass that covers the fundamental systems every business needs in order to scale efficiently. That's found at automationbridge.com forward slash systems. That's systems with an S. So until next time, automate responsibly, my friends.